Our hymn this morning will be number 615 in the Gather Books, 615. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Us ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. This morning's Mass we offer for the repose of the soul of Roli Tassi, and for the intentions of Father John Laschik, and so because of that I'll be offering a special Mass for priests. The readings are the same. And so my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who made your only begotten Son, eternal High Priest, grant that those he has chosen as ministers and stewards of your mysteries may be found faithful in carrying out the mystery they have received. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In you, Lord, I have found my peace. In you, Lord, I have found my peace. O Lord, 
My heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. In you, Lord, I have found my peace. But I have calmed and quieted my soul, like a weaned child with its mother. My soul is like the weaned child that is with me. In you, Lord, I have found my peace. O Israel, hope in the Lord, from this time on and forevermore. In you, Lord, I have found my peace. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. If you stay in my word, you will indeed be my disciples. And you will know the truth, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One Sabbath. Jesus was at the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal. Jesus said to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or sisters or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you should be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind and you'll be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you'll be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the helpful things in terms of a st kind of maintaining or developing a mental equilibrium is to learn how to tell the story of your life. And I learned this by going through the seminary and all that fun stuff because everyone always asked, what was your vocation story? What was your vocation story? What was your vocation story? And it required going back in my mind a lot to kind of say, well, what were those main moments that changed my life? And one of them was actually watching the first, the fir one of the first memories I have of when my family moved from Manitoba to Victoria was watching Forrest Gump. <laughs> and um, I still remember the movie theater, walking in, walking out, and then having a conversation with my family about what it meant. So I was about, I think, 11 at the time. So I wasn't particularly old. But what the movie ha taught me inchoately, it's a fancy little word, just means like a, like a little seed, but you can't articulate it, was that there's a difference between wisdom and intelligence. And there's this amazing scene at the very beginning of the movie when Forrest's mother um, is having a conversation with the school principal. And he says, this line is normal. Forrest is right here. Now, public schools require a minimum, a minimum IQ of 80 to attend public school. But IQ of 75 is not good enough. <laughs> and that's the very beginning. It establishes, okay, Forrest is not as smart as everyone else. And it's a deep cause of shame for him. Um, he doesn't like being told that he's not smart. And it hurts him so profoundly. And yet, at the same time, it's because of that experience that he has a deeper and much more profound confidence. And it was helpful for me because I had been blessed and or cursed with the other problem. Because if you, get, if you don't have a gift, um, then you can think, if only I had it, things would be great. Right? If I had money, things would be great. But it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> it is so not true. Um, when Jesus says, blessed are the poor, on one level, he means it. He 
he really means it. Because when you don't have something, you can admire it. When you have it, then you know that it ain't going to do nothing for you. It's like when you encounter celebrities, right? And you think, you know, we say to ourselves, we say, if we had money and fame and respect, then I'd be happy. <laughs> no! <laughs> no, it doesn't work that way at all. Not at all. And you know what happens when you get really, really good grades on a regular basis? They become meaningless. All you can do is fail. So say you're a student that has a perfect GPA. It never gets better, ever. And you, in a sense, reach a plateau. And the result is, is you can never actually do any better. And all you can do is try to keep your kingdom. This is why worldly tyrants become paranoid. Um, Stalin, Mao, Hitler, right? So all of these guys in the 20th century that did away with the religion of old and tried to create the kingdom of God on earth, then when they get to the pinnacle, what do they do? They go mad. And what's also characteristic of them is that they hate the lowly. The communist regimes of the 20th century, for all of their vaunted care for the poor and the marginalized, it was a lie. It totally was a lie. <laughs> Because if you really love the poor and the marginalized, you do not at all hate being in their company. You do not at all hate being in their company. You can delight in it. And so um, some of the first detoxes when I was first becoming Catholic was discovering that um, it doesn't matter if you can get good grades or blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Nobody cares, and that's fine. <laughs> and one of the people that really taught me this was Father John, who used to be the pastor here, and then he got dragged down um, to Victoria. And the thing was, is he endured me when I would ask really ridiculous and weird questions. He kind of gave me this look like, what are you, what's wrong with you, kid? Um, but at the same time would emphasize the most important things, which are humility, mercy, and tenderness. Because something that he taught me early on that was really hard to really figure out is watch out for flash. Watch out for the charming priest. Um, watch out for the one that everybody seems to like because they might be hiding something. And so tell the truth and be willing to be hated for it and love those who hate you for it. Ugh. And over time, um, that taught me something really, really important. Love with God's love, not with yours. And you never really know that you're loving with God's love until you're willing to love, in a sense, the same way that Jesus is describing in today's gospel. Can you serve with 100% dedication in anticipation of total failure? I learned this in RCIA processes when I got involved in that teaching part. This is not a lot of fun, but it's really important. Can you give it your entire all, and then if everyone says, we don't want anything to do with this, and then leaves, can you still say we did a good job? Because we did the best that we could. Because that's what the cross is all about. Who God is, is self-giving love. It's total self-emptying. <laughs> and it's a love that loves for love's own sake, not for the remuneration that one can get from it. And so what the Apostle Paul then does in today's first reading is then he then just reiterates this whole thing. Reiterates the whole thing. Have one mind, have one heart, and, and, and always associate with those who are, quote, lowly. 
And why? Because it's a long-term training. Because, let's just say, Forrest Gump has an IQ of 75. And there's some person that shows him contempt because he's like, well, I'm really smart because I've got an IQ of 100. And then they create a world in which they think, hmm, then I can look down on someone who's not as smart as me. What happens when that person with 100 IQ encounters somebody with one with 120? What happens when we encounter a person that maybe is at 140 or an angel? You're toast. <laughs> You are toast at that point. And how smart do we look to the eternal one? <laughs> Not so bright. Not so bright at all. In fact, we look a little absurd. <laughs> we look a little ridiculous. And if we don't know how to love the lowly, then we will never be able to love ourselves. I'm going to slow that and just repeat it. Unless we know how to love the lowly, we will never love ourselves. And what you can watch in parish life or in community life or in family life the one poison that truly tears things apart is not the fact that we make mistakes. We'll make lots. It's that we have contempt for each other. The diversity of our gifts, the diversity of our skills, or sometimes the lack thereof, they're all invitations to serve and or to be served. We should be a harmony of joy communion, fellowship, where we are just as delighted when one person can succeed and to have a moment of glory, or we can be just as delighted when our time has come and we need to step back. Just as in our own Christian lives, God gives us an offer. This is my body. Are you willing to upend your life? Are you willing to lose everything to be with him? And then we often say to God, yeah, I would love to, but <laughs> I've got all these things to do. And we know exactly how it feels when we get that message from a friend, that phone message and says, I know we've been planning this thing for a long time, but this thing came up and I'm now going to ditch you. We know that feeling. We know exactly how much that hurts. Just as Forrest knew exactly. He knew exactly what it was like to be rejected. And that's how he could teach how to love. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become our, for, come for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. In the spirit and contrite heart, it is accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And may the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who have willed that your priest should minister at the holy altar and serve your people, grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray, that their labors may constantly please you, and in your church bear that fruit which lasts forever, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God, living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. But you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants and through the prophets, taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church 
and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis our Pope, Gary our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the body and blood of Christ.
Holy Father, consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I send them into the world, says the Lord. Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. We will sing again 615. Yes, <laughs> 615 without the last verse. Sing ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find